Welcome back to Inside City Hall. I'm Errol Lewis, the political anchor of Spectrum News New York One. And for the next 20 minutes, we'll bring you the only televised debate in the race for Queens District Attorney. We're here because Queens residents will begin casting their ballots for the top prosecutor for the borough starting on this Saturday. That's when early voting begins. And uh, the full election day itself will follow on Tuesday, November 5th. The position was held for many years by Richard Brown, who passed away earlier this year. I'm joined tonight by the Democratic nominee. She is the current Queensboro president, Melinda Katz. Also with us is the Republican nominee, private attorney and former NYPD officer, Joseph Murray. Uh, welcome, candidates. Good to see you. You can see the rules of the debate on your screen. And for those of you at home, we invite you to join the conversation online using the hashtag NY1Politics. We begin now with short opening statements. Melinda Katz won a random selection on live television this afternoon, so she will go first. Good evening. Good evening, Earl. Thank you very much for having us tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great opportunity here in Queens County to effectuate real criminal justice reform while keeping our borough safe. I've been an attorney for almost 30 years now. And in each part of my career, I have stood up to powerful interests, whether they were real estate developments, whether they were the Queens County organization 25 years ago, or whether they were the Catholic Church to protect sexually abused children. As the borough president, we stand up every single day against Trump's policies, against his policies of ripping children away from their mothers at the borders, against the policy of ICE agents going into our courthouses, against the policy of the fact that he doesn't want gun control, that we are dying in Queens County and there is no response from the President of the United States. As the Borough President, I run a multi-million dollar budget and we have a voice that we give to the vulnerable every single day. To be the District Attorney of an office of over 700 people, you need to have that skill set and you need to have that experience to not only bring our office into the 21st century, but also to keep our borough safe. Thank you very much for listening tonight. Thank you. Your turn, Mr. Murray. Well, I'm going to make it very simple. Uh, after hearing the borough president, I am running because I am against this progressive criminal justice reform that's being rammed down our throats by the mayor de Blasio, particularly starting with the closing of Rikers Island. Now, last week I attended the subcommittee hearing uh, where I watched uh, the committee members patting each other on the back saying how wonderful this was, the vote to close Rikers Island, but that it was the first step in eliminating all jails and all prisons, because as they say, people do not belong in cages. Then they went on to say that there are no such thing as criminals. These are victims. They need to be held and hugged, and we'll put them in shelters or things of that nature. They want to do away with crime and punishment, I'm against it. Vote for me, and that's what you'll get. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. I'm going to start with uh, the first question. In fact, we'll pick up on uh, something that you were getting at, Mr. Murray. New bail reforms that take effect in January are intended to significantly decrease the number of detainees in jail while awaiting trial. Supporters say that it will, the changes will ensure a fairer system by not penalizing people for merely being unable to come up with bail, while critics say that the changes will unintentionally, perhaps, put people on the street who are facing very serious charges. How will you navigate the new system in a way that keeps Queens residents safe, and do you intend to challenge or amend any of the reforms? We'll start with you, Mr. Moore. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, because that is a very important issue. January 1st, uh, if, if uh, the numbers are correct, they're estimating about 2,000 people will be released from Rikers Island or incarceration, wherever they are, but primarily Rikers Island, if they're in on bail, because there's no more bail uh, applicable to these specific charges. That is crazy. I have to say that. I think it's horrible what they're doing. I am going to fight that tooth and nail. I am a criminal defense attorney. I represent clients. I represent clients who are subject to being put in jail on bail. Let me tell you who they are. They are people who have records of violence, records of serious crimes, going to prison, records of not appearing in court. Then you have people who maybe it is their first time and they come before a judge and the judge will release them. Then they'll go out 
and commit another crime. And they get back in front of the judge, and the judge says, well, now I'm going to set bail. And they may go out and commit another crime. And then they come back in, and the judge is like, I'm sorry. Because of what you're doing, you present as a flight risk because now you have multiple charges. I'm going to set higher bail. And I'll add something else just real quick. The parents, I represent these clients. They tell me after these multiple arrests, let them sit there. He needs to learn his lesson. Mm -hmm. This is not people who are poor and just can't afford to pay bail. Okay, Ms. Katz. There's a lot of generalities uh, in that statement. I think th the fact is, whether you get out of jail before you are convicted should not depend on the amount of money that you have in the bank. That is the unfairness of the bail system. And so to try and create fairness and equity, they got rid of bail for the misdemeanors, and I get that. But at the end of the day, there are diversion programs that are necessary to make sure that especially these young people don't come back into our system. Drug rehab programs, gun violence programs, cure violence to make sure that the violence is interrupted in the street. But at the end of the day, bail is an outdated system that doesn't work anymore. You can commit a crime that is worthy of a million dollars in bail. And you can pay that bail. And you can be home with your children that night and having dinner, and you can walk your children to school. But if you are a, a victim of poverty, if you simply don't have the money to pay a $500 bail or a $2,000 bail, you will be sitting on Rikers Island until your case is called, and you'll be at the mercy of the court system and everything surrounding this criminal justice system. That is just not the way we need to move forward. So I'm looking forward to instituting diversion programs. I'm looking forward to making sure that we uh, lower recidivism rates here in Queens County. But at the end of the day, you can't send someone to jail simply because they're poor. And mm -hmm. that's what that is. And, and, and Mr. Murray, if, um, if it is the law of the land, if you are the, the district attorney, um, perhaps you challenge it, you ask for an amendment to the law and so forth. But operationally, if you are there on January 1st, what, what will you do in this new world of, of uh, less bail being applied? Well, listen, what I do, and I do it in my practice and every aspect of my life, is I try to think outside the box. And I try to accomplish a goal within the parameters of the law. I do respect the law. But here's an example. Traditionally, when a police officer makes an arrest, they always charge the highest crime. Then when it gets to the DA's office, because, well, let me just back up. They charge the highest crime because they only have to have probable cause of the elements to charge it and make the arrest. A prosecutor has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So when the prosecutor, the DA's office, looks at an arrest I made, they look at it more as how, how convincing is the evidence that I might be able to get proof beyond a reasonable doubt, and they'll lower the charge. Well, because of the new bail law, and there are violent criminals like, a, like burglary two, rob two, who would automatically be released, I will look to see if I can articulate legally within the law a higher charge that might cause them to be held on bail or remanded if the circumstances warrant it. Got it. You wanted a quick response. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have ADAs that are on duty in the evenings, and they will be able to be approached any time of night, any time of day, to look at what the charges should be of those that are brought in. And one of the ways to get diversionary programs intact and to make sure that people also don't end up going through the justice system when, when they shouldn't have to, um, is to make sure that they go into these programs pre-charge. And that's really the leverage you use. You say to someone, look, you're, you have a, a, you're addicted to drugs, you uh, need to have mentors, you need to have programs. I'm willing to work with you on that. You show up at this program three hours a day and perhaps we'll think about the charges again. But the new laws uh, don't really allow for that. So that's really how you determine to use it. ADAs have to be on, on standby all night. They have to be part of the system. And where I am uniquely uh, uh, able to be able to do this is you also have to get buy-in from the police department. You have to get buy-in from the judges. And there has to be a system in place to make sure that recidivism lowers. And in Queens County, that is desperately needed. OK. Um, I have a, a question on a new topic. Uh, despite overall crime remaining low in our city, there are growing concerns of spikes in crime in various areas. For example, this year so far, there have been 22 murders in Queens North, uh, about eight precincts, which is a 120% increase over the last two years. There have also been 42 shooting victims, which is a 100% increase over the last two years. 
Uh, what do you think accounts for these increases, and what do you plan to do about it if elected? And we'll start with you, Ms. Katz. So in Queens County, we have incredible cure violence groups. We have incredible drug rehabilitation programs, workforce development programs, and mediators that go out when there is shootings and violence in the neighborhoods. And these mediators help calm what's going on in the community. And we need to partner with them. They're doing it on their own. They're out there working the streets, working families, making sure that people have a place to go. And they're doing it all alone. And at the end of the day, the district attorney's office needs to partner with them to empower to make sure that we get rid of the guns on the street. In Queens County alone, from the beginning of the year to date, October 20th is the last number, in Queens County, our gunshots have gone up 10.5%. And by the way, just so you can put that in perspective, it's gone up 3.5% all over the city of New York. So in Queens County, we have even a more of an argument to make sure that we have this cooperation going on. And by the way, you're not getting rid of guns just by working with the young people. You gotta go after gun traffickers and you gotta use the support and you have to use the confidence and you have to use the relationships and the deep ties that I have built as the district attorney all over the, just all over the borough of Queens to get at the gun traffickers. We may wanna make sure that young people don't pick up a gun, but I will tell you this, a gun trafficker brings guns into my borough, mm -hmm. we're going after them, we're convicting them. And that has to be done together with the community. Okay, Mr. Murray. This is uh, a, another clear difference between me and Ms. Katz, uh, Borough President Katz, I'm sorry. A clear difference in that she just wants to throw programs at a problem I would say is our most severe and dangerous problem. Guns kill people. People that shoot people kill people. It's the people that are doing this. I think we need to have a very clear policy. You use a gun, you carry a gun, you're going to prison. That's it. Unless you come in and sit with me and talk to me or my investigators about where you got this gun, what crimes you know about or you've been involved in. If not, I'm sending that clear message. You carry a gun or use a gun in Queens County illegally, you're going to prison. The contrary is she only wants to go after gun traffickers. I don't see how we eliminate the personal responsibility of the person that makes that decision to pick up a gun and then fire that gun. Why should that person not be punished? First of all, by the way, the idea that cure violence groups and, and all of these uh, organizations that have been working so hard for years on the streets means that we're not going to punish individuals that deserve to be punished. They are not preclusive of one another. They work together as a team. But you know what? You can't unshoot a gun. And a, sh a gun is fired, someone dies, someone's in the hospital, families are ripped apart, victims' families are ripped apart, and by the way, shooters' families are ripped apart as well. And you can't unshoot and you can't undo the damage that has been done. My idea of criminal justice and my idea of keeping Queens County safe is that we institute programs that people don't want to pick up guns, and then we work with the correctional facilities and we work with probation and we work with all of the people that are already in the system to make sure that those that should be punished should be punished. But they are not preclusive of one another. And by the way, with an increase of 10.5% in Queens County, clearly simply convicting is not working. Okay, um, let's uh, take a short break. We'll have more of this debate in just a minute when we return. Stay with us. We are back inside City Hall where we're holding a debate in the race for Queens District Attorney. It is time now for our cross-examination round. That's when each candidate gets to question his or her opponent. And uh, going first will be Melinda Katz. So, Mr. Murray, um, you've indicated that you like Donald Trump. Um, I think that's an exact quote. I like him. Um, but you're going to be the chief law enforcement officer of the Borough of Queens if you win the District Attorney's race. Donald Trump has says that not only could he not be prosecuted as a sitting president, but he can't even be investigated that he is above the law. And so I was wondering if you agree with that. Well, first of all, I, I kind of anticipated this being the question because this is something that when you have nothing to attack on merit, you throw in Donald Trump. And I just want to point out 
This is a job application, what we're doing here. We're applying to the people for, to have them select us if we would be their representative in court. Now, in the 13 years I've been practicing law, never once has anyone asked me about who I voted for in a presidential election. They've asked me about my qualifications, my experience, my plan to address their situation, and then how much it would cost. That's what the people want to hear. So bringing up Donald Trump is, in my opinion, just your, your way of not being able to address me on the merits. But to answer your question, I am a Democrat running on the Republican line. The Democratic Party hates me because I'm challenging you, and God forbid you go against the party. The Republican Party tolerates me. They tolerate me because they know I'm a Democrat. I'm the most qualified person, so they tolerate me. I owe nothing to no one. If I find evidence of corruption, my squad that I'm hiring, what I call the untouchable squad, they will seek out this corruption wherever it leads, Republican or Democrat. Okay. Uh, the floor is yours. Your turn to ask a question, Mr. Mayor. I represent a number of high-profile cases in Queens County while you've been borough president. I just want to address Let's see if you recognize them. I represent a sergeant in the 109 precinct. His name is Stephen Lee, who went undercover and, and reported and uncovered widespread police corruption. There were multiple arrests. There was a lieutenant and a detective who were convicted. He's now being retaliated against and suffering harassment from the police department. I filed a lawsuit on his behalf. It's been in the newspapers for years. I'm just wondering why you haven't reached out to him, to me, to the department in any way to try to address what's happening. That's, so there are, several, there are several cases that have gone on over the last few years, and as I've been the borough president, the truth is we haven't really heard you opine on anything that's been going on in Queens County. So I will not talk about cases that are in front of the district attorney's office, but I do think that it's interesting to note just that to be with clear, all of the issues, the DA's office. it's a civil the case is over. It's a civil suit against the city because this heroic officer who reported okay. corruption Nothing. is being harassed, and, and the, the borough president doesn't care. And on the same note, there are individuals being harassed in Queens County. There's ICE that's coming into courthouses, into educational facilities. You're, we you're have had economic <laughs> development issues that have come up. We had a rape in Howard Beach that we heard nothing from you on. And so at the end of the day, you can do gotcha questions because that's what people do. But at the end of the day, it's I would have gotcha loved question. to have- You're the have... borough president. I had a 14-year-old girl who got into a, a lift car and the guy unbuckled his belt and masturbated. It was on Channel 7 News. Did I get a phone call from the borough president? No. And there are thousands of cases that go of on course. in Queens County that don't but get a phone call. But you are the let borough president. Let, let, let her finish. This is just question and answer. No, there are thousands of cases that go on in, borough, in, in Queens County that don't get a phone call from the borough president on it. I'm actually doing my job. I'm the borough president of Queens County. We have been in the communities, walking the walk and talking the talk. We have been stealing convictions for folks. Well, convictions I've been out over. there representing the people and protecting their rights. You're walking around. You can't even make a phone call to see how this 14-year-old girl who's in a car and the driver is masturbating. And you know what the issue was in that case that I got involved? The police called Lyft to get the identity and location of that driver. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't give it to him. So the family, out of frustration, called me. I went to the TLC, identified them, gave it to the police. They made an arrest, and there's a conviction. Okay. Okay. So Why wasn't the borough president involved? Why aren't you horrified by this, like the other families and parents who have saw yeah. the story and contacted me? Okay. So well, you know, real, real briefly. Earl, I do and, think, and make sure you give her your number. I do think that this is one of the problems with this race. This is a very serious office with very serious issues. We have been dealing with so many things over the last several years. We had so many criminal activities, too, that I have been involved with. I was involved with the rape that happened in Howard Beach. I was involved with many hate crimes that we stood in front of mosques when people were getting killed simply because they were coming out of a mosque. I stood up against hate crimes against um, when they had 
swastikas on synagogues. So there is so many things that we have done, but I do think this is the problem with this race. This is a serious office and needs serious leadership. And with over 700 people in the district attorney's office, you need someone who's actually been there and done the talk with the individuals in the community and run a multi-million dollar office to be able to organize it in the proper way. Okay, um, I wanna move on to um, a, a question that you alluded to before, which is the question of Rikers Island. And I wanna start with you, Ms. Katz. You support, uh, well, as we know, the city council just voted to open four new jails as part of the broader effort to close Rikers by 2026. Uh, and I, I know both of you have problems with the plan. You support the closure, Ms. Katz, but you had a number of procedural objections, including the use of a single land use vote to cover sites in four boroughs. That is behind us now. The vote has passed. Do you now support the idea of opening a facility at Kew Garden? So to be clear, my objections were not just procedural. Uh, my objection was that you're closing really one horrible institution, mass institution, and replacing them with four horrible mass institutions. They think they're gonna lower the rate of people that are in Rikers to about 3,000. So the math doesn't add up. To put a 1,500 bed facility in the Borough of Queens, and just for the record and so I'm clear, I will oppose anywhere in the Borough of Queens, a 1,500 bed facility, just doesn't add up with the numbers. I believe in community jails. It is the common construct of jails all around the country now, and I believe that they will do good. But with that, you also need a guarantee of services for the individuals that are in the jails. Nobody comes out of Rikers better than when they went in. But if we're gonna do community jails, we have to do it right. And the fact is, it is the common construct of today's time. But as far as the mayor's plan goes, they're too big. And the community was not involved in the initial replacement of those jails. And so that's what I was truly against. Got it. Mr. Murray, I know you have a different view of this. I do, and I thank you. Uh, I, I, I don't know where to start. There's so many falsities that came out. First of all, Rikers Island, you do come out better off than when you go in because there's in a number of programs. I have a client on there right now who's now called me very happily to tell me he's OSHA certified because he took their required courses. He's now enrolled in a writing program offered by, sponsored by Columbia University. Now I have uh, other clients in the past, a lot of them dealing with domestic violence. There's a, a, a program called Steps to End Family Violence. And they have counselors and psychologists that go out there, they give them anger management, they give them all kinds of batterers programs and, and educate them and they come out so much better. Rikers Island is an old facility. I get it. There are two empty jails right there now. We should refurbish them, upgrade them, give them better cameras with audio. It's the jail culture that makes a jail violent. You know, you can't just call 911 when you're in a jail. Mm -hmm. And if I rat on you for stabbing me, I no longer have a problem with you, Earl. I have a problem with her and this one over here. Mm -hmm. So what's my remedy? I got to get something and, and fight you back. Otherwise, I'm a target. That's jail culture. We're not going to eliminate that by moving it to, to Kew Gardens. By the way, for the record, New York City is the only counties, five counties, that do not have community jails. There's community jails in every county throughout the entire state of New York. The average inmate for those jails are 223 people per county jail. And by the way, the largest one is Suffolk County and it's 1,300 people and they divide it in two. Mm. So this is not an aberration. This is not something that's an unusual thought. New Jersey has it, Pennsylvania has it. So it is the common thing to do here in the state of New York. It's just not common for the city of New York. Okay. Uh, with all due respect, I just have to respond to one issue. I represent people. I am the one, contrary to Ms. Katz, I talk to my people and they're telling me, please, we don't want what they're trying to do. They're trying to normalize going to jail. We don't want our kids to think it's okay that it's summer camp. You can go to this new jail in the neighborhood and your friends will come by and you can, they can see you. We want jail to be a place they don't want to go back to. Okay. Um, it is uh, time for our lightning round. I'm gonna ask you for uh, short responses, mostly yes or no. Uh, just to get you on the record on, on certain issues. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Mr. Murray. Should there be term limits for district attorneys? I believe so. Ms. Katz. I, I don't believe in term limits, period. Okay. Uh, Ms. Katz, have you ever gotten a red light camera or speed camera ticket? No. Mr. Murray? Yes. Uh, Mr. Murray, have you ever ridden on a city bike? No. 
Ms. No. Katz, no, me neither. Um, <laughs> uh, Ms. Katz, should Officer Daniel Pantaleo have been fired from the NYPD? Yes, and by the way, justice delayed is justice denied. Mr. Murray? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray, do you plan to open a conviction review unit in your first six months in office? Yes, I do. If elected. Ms. Katz? Yes. Uh, Ms. Katz, fair evaders currently get a $100 penalty. Should it be higher, should it be lower, or is it just about right? I, I think it should be right. The question is whether they should be arrested for it, but mm -hmm. I think the fine is right. Mr. Murray. I prefer that fair beaters go through the system. I think it's more of a deterrence. We don't, the fine or incarceration is not the issue. We want to deter people from committing offenses. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray, do you agree with the law that allows undocumented immigrants to obtain driver's licenses? I don't agree. I absolutely think it's safer. And right, by the way. Uh, Ms. Katz, should serial flashers and gropers be banned from taking the subway? I think, it's, I think we have to talk about how to do that. I think you're setting up a problem for them not to be able to get services okay. as well. That's but nice. we do need a better way to protect people on the subway. Mr. Murray. I just don't see how that's feasible and workable, so I, I would have to say no as, at this point. Okay, Mr. Murray. Um, what area of crime is the city not doing enough to crack down on? I, as we talked about, the gun violence. gun violence. It has to be much stricter. Oh, I'm sorry. The Ms. Katz. Gun violence and sex trafficking. Okay. Uh, I got uh, a final question for this debate, and um, it, it's uh, about the, the question of whether or not to pursue criminal charges against sex workers. Um, the, the question of whether it should be decriminalized, um, whether you should use your discretion to go after them and so forth. Um, and if you do think it should be decriminalized or charges not pursued, how would you handle quality of life complaints from residents? like people who don't want to live next to a brothel or see prostitution going on in parks and uh, vacant lots. I'll start with you, Mr. Murray. A uh, very easy answer. I have no interest in decriminalizing sex trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Katz. Um, I think we're, we're not going to arrest people for sex working. We're not going to convict people for sex working. We're going to actually try and get to the sex traffickers and those that are forcing people into this industry. And at the same time, try and make sure if there's other issues like drug abuse or anything else that comes with the industry um, that we can be of service. These are women that are being double victimized. These are people that are being double victimized. And by the way, when they go through the sex trafficking um, court in Queens County, we also have ICE agents. So so they weren't victimized the first time bad enough. Now we're doing it again by having uh, ICE agents stand outside the courthouse to double victimize them. We need to get the sex traffickers. We need to have a line to those sex traffickers. You're not going to get that line unless we have the trust and the faith of the community. Okay, so then again, the flip side of it, when you know, mothers show up at your community meetings and say, I don't like seeing you know, condoms on the sidewalk. I don't like having a brothel in my apartment building. What do you tell them? And it's what we do now as borough president as well. We work with the community to try to combat those things, right? If there's a, a trash issue, if there's a condom issue, if there's any of the issues that happen from the sex working or from different kids hanging out, from any of that, we try and combat that every single day. Okay. Um, thank you, candidates. That is going to do it for this debate. Thanks to both of you for joining us tonight. And please remember to vote. Early voting starts on Saturday, and Election Day itself falls on November 5th. We're going to take a short break now. Straight ahead, Bobby Cusa will be here to end the show with some analysis of this debate. Stay with us.